Should I begin from the beginning again then, Claire? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll mute yeah. myself. Yeah. And you can put it on yeah. present mode. Yes. Um, oh, I didn't want to start there. Please excuse. Okay. Uh, uh, Claire, I'm just presenting this James Lovelock and 101 birthday and the Gaia 101 fest. And I'm doing it to you because I, I'm just trying to, to understand what, why we're doing this theater and the legislative theater. And I, I'm writing this, sketching out the context for myself and for the team, I guess. So here it goes. So who is James Lovelock? And uh, Lovelock, I can hear the love lock. It's like the love is closed down. So we had to free that love lock in celebrating his, uh, the Earth System Science Initiative and the Gaia Hypothesis. So this is the echo cons consciousness re representing the Greek goddess of Gaia, Terra in Roman or in the, uh, and then the, yeah. So, the, and then the, his last book, the hyper intelligence and the, how artificial intelligence can save us, humanity. So that's the, the art science, the Gaia theory, and how this uh, technology can save the hot age for humanity. So the, he presented this Nova, the Nova time or Nova sonic summertime. So I'm improvising Claire on the, from the, from the book by the, from um, uh, the Silent Spring into this new sonic summer by the Nova sonic summer thing. So I'm just improvising on that. Based on legislative theater, governance, lectures, interviews, talks, the new era, the old wisdom of indigenous in a new Latin where we have mama theories and the earth mother and all her children meets in more in a deeper ecology uh, and the blue uh, dot theory of, um, of the global space age. But you know it, you know it there. Uh, the sacred balance is broken between humans and nature and it's the indigenous tribes of the planet that is holding that sacred balance together. So, and then there is something with the, in, in breathing and pollution of the air. And that's what the anger and the Mad Max situation of the post-corona and with, uh, with Floyd and the killing and the racism that is system in, uh, in the United States. I hope I'm not too long. You want me to continue? continue? The quote, it is not only bad people that commit genocide. The whole thing, I'm just muting, yeah. so I'm not a distraction. Yeah, so we are all capable of being that criminal act against nature. It's part of human evolution. James Lovelock quote. So the race, the human danger, and human are in fact a danger for ourselves. So can, we, can human tribes save itself or have we enslaved a reality to ourselves? So that's my kind of storyline on this, on the cyborg, the tech, human, global culture, virtual reality, um, and this new cosmology for the human race to be even be more human, and a deep adaption to that of the art of being human. Again, connecting us to the, the art, the possible art of being human in time of crisis from the Know What community care. I like to give credit to the community we've been part of. So the, the sound of the earth, sound of nature, Gaia, Pachamama, and the fireside stories, and the birth of, the, of a new political movement from range in the streets and riots to a legislative power of words and human will.
and wisdom. So that's what I see that this initiative of the, the legislative radio is part of. And I'm presenting this uh, presentation just to get some feedback on this, this thinking. So we've been talking about in the radio, the silent people are not silent anymore. We are through the arts of theater and we're using the power, or not over people, but to give power to people, to ourselves, and to free our creative spirit, to thrive. or maybe I'm too fast. The, the enemy is invisible, as in the COVID-19. It's the same with pollution in the air. So, and governments around the planet are very rational to deal with this problem. And that's part of the gift that we can give to the Nova Sonic Summer 2020 in a sound garden production. It is easy to make a desert than making a forest, James Lovelock. What is the possible human life if we replant a forest together with the rest of the habitants of the earth? Because clean the air, the plants do, and the trees, and the ocean. It will take thousand years to repair the damage of microplastic in the ocean and the particles polluted in the sky. And even the, the, the waste that they put up in satellites, up in the, in the stratosphere, will be pollution. So we have to find a way to live and thrive in the meantime. And that's what we have to bring forward, the arts. And this is the global virtual theater performance. It's a contributing in the genesis in the Nova scene, the new area. So the, the Anthropocene is t fighting out and the Nova scene is coming. And this may be like the Indian presented to us as well, is this shift that we're linking to different uh, wisdom, deep wisdom uh, traditions on the planet. Kala Yuga, I think it was called. Kala Yuga. So it is less expensive to make peace with the enemy than being in a war with the enemy. So that's why we're working on a global peace culture and understanding this oneness of humanity, of collaboration. But we have to find a way to hold local governments and corporations accountable for criminal act or the exercise. And our suggestion is to look at the air pollution. So this is the creative collaborative symbiosis of human nature and artificial tech, which is the James Lovelock uh, synthesis in his last book. Uh, yeah. So what is the quick fix and what can sustain a deep adaptation? This is, I don't know exactly where it comes from, but this is all about climate speculation. It's, it's difficult for, you, for us, but as we learn skills of system thinking together with lifelong learning beyond our educational system uh, and between generations, it can be very uh, useful because human as a species, we cannot stop climate change. It's impossible. That's all the, uh, I think this is coming from Lace, uh, James, uh, James Lovelock, that we have to get smart cities. He's using Singapore, the ant nest, and how to adapt to a reality. And an equatorial jungle around the like, example of Singapore, and how we can organize yourself in creative cities. So that's the smart city and the, the artificial intelligence, which is very technical things, but I, I can see that uh, the open source people are working on how to measure uh, in a technical way air pollution. It's possible to measure it in streets. I, it's a UK implement, invention there, and I was looking at it at this night uh, on the internet.
so yeah so this is the climate of the ocean as the climate of the atmosphere and how to understand this balance equilibrium thing and the evolution of of gaia in in us human human beings how we are really understanding our even in my local context i only can see 100 meter but i have the consciousness understand uh, or 48 hours time schedule i understand 10000 clock going back to technology it's it's amazing time so we are at the interface of beautiful technology in many ways so the anthropocene in james lovelock interview it, he referred it to the 1712 and the steam engine so that transformation of the world by the humans and then the novocene is the partnership with human and artificial intelligence making us cyborgs like you and me now we're talking in uh, real time beyond time and space in an instant it's insane yeah i can't believe that it's possible you know that we are so this is a hyper intelligence that we are carrying because we can can talk with each other that's this is something i don't like with the gent like geoengineering he wants to make clouds artificial clouds that can stop the sun's ray to come down to the to protect gaia making um And then it, this is interesting. This is beautiful, uh, 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 Claire. I need to talk to you about this. This is consciousness evolution of humanity. We talked about that. But more interesting is unconsciousness evolution of humanity. For example, in sports, when you throw a ball and you catch it, you, you can do it without thinking rationally. That's what's happened when, with this uh, Floyd. Uh, the killing of Floyd, it was an unconscious spark of anger and rage. It was like an ethical dimension in thousands and thousands of people on different corners of the earth. We don't want to see that killing by authorities like the police. So that's an unconscious part of our brain that has empathy and compassion. And that's where the theater, the improvisation, where we are playing with each other without knowing each other. That's here. You have to fill me in, Claire. What What do you want from me right now? Uh, anything. <laughs> um, it's very rich. I I have a, a deep passion and conviction that. Theatre, sound, arts of all kinds, poetry, mime. It doesn't have to be verbal. Um, are, are what it's going are what is going to help enable this transition, this transition in consciousness from a, a rational, a cold rational approach to life to something that appreciates the complexity of being alive the interdependent nature of being alive the feeling sense of being alive the elemental sense of being alive the terror-ness of life and the the brain the mind brain the rational articulation of mind brain is not sufficient to be qualified or capable of feeling into the complexity, the interdependence. So art forms exist to help facilitate humans traveling into the, the deepness of what that connection is and what it means and how to protect it, how to behave in accordance with those laws, those, those natural laws, above and beyond anything that the human has conceived of using only language um, and not the heart and and not the um, feeling sense of interconnectedness 
So it's what will bring back our ability to experience empathy as a consequence. So not just as an option, but as um, something that directs our attention and our focus and our activities because we feel the immediate impact of our choices. So that is what it means to become fully human. It means that we, we stop thinking that thinking is in, in and of itself the, the, the fastest, shortest straight line between a problem and a solution, because it's not. It's actually a way to generate more problems with a, a long arc of impact and a, over a long period of time. So there's something about stepping into the not knowing, which is related to the Ajna, the third eye, which is where our humility, us understanding the scale of who we are in, in the gestalt of the whole of the cosmos, the galaxial reality that we're from and of and in, that will help us to, I think, play. Play with curiosity and inquisitiveness not to dominate or own anything, that's very uh, 20th century, but to, um, to recognize ourselves as cosmological beings, as, as stardust with minds, bodies, and, um, and feelings. So. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's, um, uh, when you talk now, what comes to me is that how can I communicate this complexity to the youth? And my mind was thinking again about Extinction Rebellions and uh, Fridays for Future. And to, I, I, I put up another sentence here, uh, Claire, after this training of empathy and compassion. And as you mentioned, the theater and the arts as part to be that transformative culture on a global scale. And, and this one-on-one -on -one piloting of a global theater, virtual theater group. And I'd like to give credit to David that he really started the virtual theater already in 1992. So he really has a huge and, and deep commitment in, the, in, F, in his effort to make this possible. Look what I wrote here. Uh, from the Greek perspectives, uh, they ha we have the Olympic Games in the sports from the Greeks. So you get, make a culture that is uh, winner takes all, it's faster, higher, better, I am the strongest, right? So we have been cultivating a modern culture on those it's Greek principles. The I, as you mentioned, is I am. I know they have team sports, but, but yeah. it's even that team is the best. Yes. yes. So, so, but so, 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 so the arts has been on a fringe culture of like kind of funny people having an entertainment and and being funny, but in in the Greek uh, mythology at the time, it in the Athenian arena or forum, and as forum theater, I these new words for me, but I believe I understand them. <laughs> uh, um, it's. Uh, it was part of the civic culture. The theater was putting the problem in paradoxes to understand and grasp. So, but that is the, uh, the, 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 the perfect state as in Plato's uh, scripts, which is impossible. So anyway, this, uh, so, yeah. This is what I wrote. I don't have it. I forgot. I wrote it four o'clock in, in the morning. <laughs> our lives is wholly dependent, dependent on a living and thriving planet. It is our home. And how do we take care of it? That's a gift we have to raise in a, in a, in a question in this forum theater. So we are staging a civic discussion to find a way forward through theater and the arts. So there is some common climate tipping points and how will we cope to meet and train ourselves to survive in these tougher times. And this is all about not knowing. We don't know. But anyway, we are living a collect collective threshold to adapt to the reality 
of war and economic collapse, financial struggles, uh, hardship. So this global civic culture in, in mutual dependence, how to help each other and to help uh, a living earth system, that's a new cosmology and a consciousness that we have to live and manifest. So this is the human rights charter and the earth charter, the Rome statute, statute in criminal court, the ecocide law, this is the missing, fifth, uh, the missing fifth crime against peace. So the power of law or ecocide has a, uh, has a legal duty that can have a uh, keep governments, corporations uh, accountable for acts that is damaging livelihood for future generations and species. And that is a process that is really way forward. So it's a call for an amendment that we can have this super law to, to, to stop, stop. You know, the, 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 as we did with the law, we have to stop it, uh, destruction of our ecosystem because we are choking. We will not have air to breathe. It will be hotter and hotter. So that's the, 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 the consciousness and unconsciousness also, and the global ethical laws to respect nature. Um, bringing back to this um, um, deep ecology on the, first, uh, the second slide of the deep ecologies from the Norwegian context, this is uh, the founder, and this 50 year celebration when he was chained himself to a rock to protect the, the Northern Europe's longest waterfall. He was then accused of civil disobedience, disobedience to protect the rights of nature. Disobedience. Huh? Disobedience. Disobedience. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so this is, this is happening, um, uh, this is like a waterfall, uh, one hour, no, two hour drive inside the mountains for me. So that's where I can be. In, in July, uh, before the jazz to collect, uh, or I take a trip there and go for a Sunday trip and sleep in a tent, something like that, and connect some sounds for you from that waterfall and sit there in front of the waterfall and send it to you. So, so, they are, so then they, that's the idea for that. So falling in love with nature, and the, that's the love lock, it's, it's the lock uh, to free this lockdown <laughs> on love lock celebration and to fall in love with nature and the grander cosmology of being alive. That's the art of being fairly human in the Nova scene. I love that we're referring to our kind of eclectic gatheringness group as the Sound Garden Collective. That's really resonant. And I. It's a yeah. It's a beautiful Novasonic summer. I don't think anyone has used that phrase, or maybe, but, but I believe, it's like it comes from this, the, the silent spring, and then it's the Novasonic. It's a new sounds. And, and I, th I believe this improvised theater group from the Indian and the team from the, from the UK, um, and you in the California and myself here, and, and then I can cut, cut it down to the South African parts again. I think we can create something. Yeah. I think that's the end. Okay. Intrinsic value, the defenders of nature, the poetics of deep ecology, the poetics. I think it's poetics. Oh, politics. Okay. No, or it could be poetics and it could be. It could be, yeah, poetics I like. It should be probably be politics. <laughs> poetics. I like poetics. poetics. Fuck politics. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Ah, okay. So do you think that's the last slide? All right, then I'm going to stop recording.